Shalom. Man, it's an honor to be here and try. I'm always inspired by what you and what you all are doing around the world to make an impact, and it's just incredible. And we're going to see this is the time to do it. And to come up after Paul Wilbur led worship, he's one of the he is one of the pioneers of the Messianic movement, and just has had such an incredible journey and ministry and touched so many lives including mine when I became a new believer it's the first music I listened to was yours so it just had a tremendous impact and we know the best is yet to come and uh, we just come tonight with a sense of anticipation and expectation because I believe there is a spirit of breakthrough for all of us that are here and all of us are watching can you say spirit of breakthrough so let's create that atmosphere and believe for that breakthrough here this evening. Amen? Amen. So, Abba Father, we just come before you in the name of Yeshua, and we thank you that breakthrough is available in you because you are the one who breaks open the way and comes before us. Lord, I just asking that tonight that you were going to break things off people, God, that you were going to break through. We're asking you to break in. We give this evening to you, Lord. I give this message to you, and we ask, Holy Spirit, we say, Bona Ruach we say, come, Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst this evening. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, our Messiah, amen. amen. So friends, I am excited to be here, and I am excited for the time and season in which we are living in, and I'm, I'm, I'm always glad to be here at this time, and just by way of reminder that we are on the Hebrew calendar in the decade of the pay. Can you say pay? Can we get the first slide? We are in the decade of the pay, and pay means mouth. So we are in the decade of the mouth, and I want you to say there is power in my pay. There is power in your mouth. And that's why it is so important tonight as we go through this message we are going to make declarations, and we're going to say these things, and we are going to declare these things. And I hope that it's just not tonight that you're saying them, but that you will go home and throughout this year that you will make these declarations. Because when God created the world, he spoke the world into existence. There is power in what we say. There is the power by the Spirit of God that lives in us to call forth things that are not as if they were. And when we make these verbal declarations, it builds that authority within us. And so it's the, it's the, there's power in the pay. It's the, it's the decade of the pay, but it's also the decade of breakthrough because the letter pay is the letter of breakthrough. Parats in Hebrew say breakthrough. And we've talked about this before, but it is a time to come out of Egypt. Everything related to the Passover and the exodus from Egypt is connected to the letter pay. Passover begins with a pay. Pharaoh begins with a pay. Redemption begins with a pay. So all these letter pay is all connected to coming out of Egypt. So I want you to declare with me by way of reminder, I am coming out of Egypt. <coughs> Say, I am coming out of the box. I, the box. I will not be limited. <laughs> Turn to someone and say, you will not be confined. And say, you are going to break through. <laughs> I am going to break through. So each year has a specific meaning connected to it. And that we are in the year 5782. Say 5782. 5782. And I want to explore through the spiritual and prophetic meaning of this year through the numbers. So the first thing I want to say is that it is, next slide, it is a year of new beginnings. So the way that we write 82 in Hebrew is pe, which is the 80, and the letter 2, which is the bet. 
And the letter Bet is actually the first letter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, in the beginning in Hebrew is Bereshit. Can you say Bereshit? Bereshit. So Bet is the letter of beginnings. And I want to encourage you that this is, a, some of you feel like you've blown it or this hasn't, last season hasn't been that great for you, but I want to encourage you, this is a year of new beginnings and of second chances and the numerical value of the letter bait is the number two, as in second chances. God wants you to give yourself a second chance. He wants to have you give others a second chance. And I think the thing I want to encourage you with tonight as we begin is that the greatest leaders always fail before they fly. You will never fly if you're not willing to fail. You will never fly if you're not willing to fall. The righteous fall seven times and get back up again. In fact, God can use those falls and failures, even if it's an epic fail, to be kind of like a trampoline and you can catch the bounce to go higher when you're in the Lord. You're a new creation in him. This old season is passing away and this new season is coming I never forget when I was young, we used to love to play kickball in like third grade, and everyone was given one do over. <laughs> if you got a bad kick, friends, God's given us a do over. Especially these last couple of years, I know have been crazy for some of us. So I want you to declare this is my year of new beginning. This is my year of new beginning. Say, I will not fail, I will not fail. but I will fly. Now, I want to get to what I think is the heart of this new year. It's a year of shalom and shlemut. Say shalom Shalom. and shlemut. Shalom is peace and shlemut comes from the word shalom and it means wholeness. And what's incredible is the most significant blessing in the five books of Moses in the Torah is the high priestly blessing known as the Aaronic benediction. And the last line of the Aaronic benediction says this in Hebrew, Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord lift up his face towards you or upon you Ve'yasem lecha shalom, and may he give you shalom. Well, guess what? In Hebrew, may he give you shalom equals 782, as in 5782. This is a year of shalom. Shalom is the ultimate blessing. Shalom is the ultimate kingdom blessing. In fact, it is the culmination of every blessing. If you have everything but you don't have shalom, you don't have anything. In fact, in Jewish thought, shalom is the receptacle for God's blessing. It's kind of like the first miracle of the water into wine. Yeshua couldn't have done the miracle if there wasn't the stone pots to put the liquid in to do the miracle. And so in this season, God is wanting to create in you a receptacle, a vessel of shalom so that you can carry his blessings. And the fear and the anxiety puts cracks in the receptacle of the of the vessel that God wants to create in us to carry his blessing. And so God is is inside of you, is wanting to create this shalom. And Yeshua promises shalom. This is what he says, John 14, 27. Shalom I leave with you, my shalom I give to you, but not as the world gives, Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. Friends, the shalom of the world is an external, forced, temporary absence of conflict. But Yeshua offers us something so much more. Let's look at what is shalom, slide five. Friend, I want you to say this with me. I want you to read this definition. Shalom is the fusion 
of physical and spiritual well-being and blessing. Amen? Friends, the opposite of shalom is being fragmented. Meaning there's no coherence. It's kind of like when all the pieces of the puzzles don't seem to fit together. The pieces of our life don't seem to fit together. God wants to bring shalom. He wants to bring wholeness into our lives. You know, I'll never forget one day I was spending time with the Lord and God spoke to me and I heard the words, holy, holy, holy. But it wasn't Isaiah 6, holy, holy, holy. It was W, it was, it was H-O-L-E-Y. Then it was H-W-H-O-L-E-Y. Then it was H-O-L-Y. And the Lord said, Jason, every person, including yourself, have holes in your soul. The pains and the traumas and the losses that we go through create holes, places of lack and emptiness within us. And there's sometimes in our lives we look like a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> But what God is wanting to do in this year of shalom and shlemut wholeness, he wants you to take you on this journey of transformation and healing and take you from having so holes in your soul to becoming from W-H, to, from going from H-O-L-E-Y to W-H-O-L-E-Y to becoming holy, whole in him. So ultimately, you can become holy in the Lord. And I'll never forget, I, I had this friend and they were taking, they were creating peace through play. And in Africa, they brought these soccer balls when to have warring tribes and communities play soccer together because you can't, you don't want to kill someone you have a good time with. But the soccer balls were all breaking because the fields were so rough and they couldn't have keep up and replace them and it was too expensive. And so they actually created a soccer ball that couldn't be deflated. It would actually, when it got a hole in it, it would reinflate. And that's what you become in Yeshua. The world, the enemy wants to put holes in you. But God is saying, Yeshua is saying, in me you can be so whole that you never have to be deflated. I want you to declare with me, Lord, heal my holes and make me holy. Lord, heal my holes and make me whole. Turn to someone and say, you're going from holy to holy. Lord, I just, I just believe God is healing some things in some of you here this evening. There are some giant gaping wounds and God is beginning to close them up right now. There is a work of healing and there is four levels of shalom and shlemut wholeness that he is bringing. He's bringing spiritual, which is vertical. He's bringing inner, emotional, which is personal. He's bringing relational, which is interpersonal and horizontal. And he's bringing physical outer wholeness in body and in our material being because there is abundant life in Yeshua. Now more than ever, we need the shalom of God and the craziness of the world. Because Yeshua says, I give you my shalom, but not as the world gives. Therefore, do not be troubled or afraid. Listen, you need the shalom of God to overcome the spirit of fear that is in this world. There is a spirit of shalom that will help you overcome because shalom is not the absence of conflict and difficulty. 
It's peace of mind and calmness in the midst of the storms and the trials of life. It's not the Zen Om, right? That's not the shalom of Messiah. The shalom of the Messiah is when they're out on the Sea of the Galilee and there's a raging storm and Yeshua is fast asleep while the boat's rocking and all the disciples are in there terrified. It's the peace in the midst of the storm when everyone else is in the panic, but you have the peace because the Prince of Peace lives in you. If you are in Yeshua, you are in peace. And his peace is part of you when you are in him. Say with me, Lord, give me your shalom. Break fear and anxiety off my life. In the name of Yeshua, I am courageous. I will move forward in the face of fear because I know you are near. Friends, but how do we find this shalom that leads to wholeness? Listen. If I say in Hebrew, hello, you go to Israel and you greet someone, what do you say? Shalom. When you leave, what do you say? Wait, hold on. How can shalom be hello and how can shalom be goodbye? They're completely two opposite things. See, that is part of the secret to shalom, knowing that the beginning and the ending are connected knowing that the coming and the going are connected. Seeing God in the start and seeing God in the end, it's that starting of something new that can be scary, and it's, this, and it's the ending of a season or relationship that can be scary, but God is in it. That's why we say shalom, shalom. And one of the things I felt so strongly, God speak to me, he said, Jason, until you're willing to say shalom, meaning shalom goodbye, until you're willing to say shalom to the old, you can't say shalom to the new. You have to be willing to let some things go in order to receive the shalom that he has for you in this new season. So tonight, God is saying, it's time to say goodbye to some people, some unhealthy relationships, some unhealthy behaviors, some unhealthy attitudes. It's time to say shalom to a past season. And listen, I heard these words. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. So, so picture what you need to say goodbye to. I want you to say that. Okay. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. <laughs> Beginnings and endings are connected. And you must say bye to the past to experience the blessing and step into the promise of your future. If you're not willing to say goodbye, you'll never say hello. Slide seven. Shalom and wholeness is about making peace with the opposites. Real quick, the letter shin is the letter that represents fire in Hebrew. The letter mem is the letter that represents water, mayim in Hebrew. The letter lamid is a letter which means to teach, lil mood, lamed, okay? To learn or to teach. And the letter vav is a letter of connection. So what does that mean? You have to learn to see the connection between the fire and the water, between the opposites. There are fire seasons and there are water seasons. 
But having the shalom of God is the ability to see God in the midst of it, knowing God is in the midst of it. This is the promise of Isaiah 43 too. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Or through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk to the fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flame burn you. Friends, God is in it all. We don't fear the fire and we don't fear the floods but we carry the shalom, the confidence and authority that God is with us in all of it. But there is a cost to this shalom. We think of shalom being free, but it's not. The Hebrew word for payment is tashlum. It comes from the word shalom. In modern Hebrew, tashlum means payment. It comes from sh the word shalom. Because for there to be shalom, there has to be a price that is paid to achieve it. Yeshua paid that price for us on that cross to have shalom with God. He made peace with God on our behalf. He is the star shalom, the prince of peace. He paid a high price to purchase us, purchase our peace. And he promises us peace. But I believe to truly experience the peace that he promises, we also have to pay something. And too often we're not willing to pay the price. What is the price? Take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Taking up the cross means to have shalom, there has to be surrender. What are we not willing to surrender to him? The thing that you are not willing to surrender to him will be a cause of anxiety and a lack of peace in your life. Shalom requires sacrifice and surrender. What are you willing to lay down? Like Abraham laid down Isaac on the altar and he will lift you up. Surrender leads to shalom and shlemut. Do you know in Hebrew, there's no word for ownership? In biblical Hebrew? If you want to say something is, is, belongs to you, you use the word li. Say li. li. Like, isha sheli, my wife Miriam. Li means, literally, is the preposition two or four with the Hebrew letter that represents me or mine. So you can say it's to me or for me, but it's, if it's to me, it has to have come from somebody. God gave it to me. If it's for me, God has it for me. So what that means is we don't own anything. We only steward what has been entrusted to our lives. Therefore, we shouldn't grip onto it with such a hard hand, but we should be willing to surrender it because it all belongs to him anyway. But surrender means sacrifice, and sacrifice means there's a part of us that have to die. That's part of taking up the cross. And I gotta tell you, part of the reason the body of Messiah has not impacted the world is because there are too many people, to quote Zechariah out of context, but it'll make the point, I was wounded in the house of my friends. There are more people wounded in the church to tell. And you know why they've been wounded here? Because we haven't been willing to die to ourselves. And we've put our selfish wants and desires over the well-being of other people. See, there's some inner zombies that have to die in every one of us. We don't want the walking dead. We don't want to be the walking dead, right? You got to kill that zombie with that, or that vampire with that stake, and that stake is the cross. 
And some of us want change in our lives, but we're only willing to give them our spare change. You're not going to see change if you're going to give them your spare change. So I want you to declare with me, I surrender all to you, God. I surrender my future. I surrender my finances. I surrender my fears. I surrender my health. I surrender my family. In the name of Yeshua. And as I came out here and I was worshiping this evening, what I saw in the spirit was the Ruach Elohim Merachefet, the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep, over the chaos, over what was formless and void. And I felt the Lord say to me, I was there in the beginning in the midst of the chaos and I brought order out of chaos and I believe the Lord is saying, I want to bring order out of your chaos, but you have to invite me in to the chaos. He's in it. He's in it with you. He's in you. But you got to turn that stuff over to him and invite him into it. <laughs> God wants to empower you. But what I want us to understand is that if you think you're going to sit here tonight and take some notes and you're going to wake up tomorrow and things are going to be different, I got bad news for you. It's not. I just want, let's be real. The opposite of shalom is not conflict or war. The opposite of shalom is what we see in creation. It is chaos. God brings order out of chaos. Order is Seder. Can you say Seder? Seder. Friends, sometimes there is, there is chaos in some of our lives, or in all of us have chaos in some aspect of our lives, and that is in part because things are out of order. It means God wants to bring shalom, but before the shalom comes, you have to understand Seder. Meaning, there's some things in your life that he wants you to order differently. There are aspects of our lives and our homes that are out of order. We can't pray for a miracle and healing and yet not be willing to go out and live healthy. That is disrespecting the Lord. We can't ask God to bless our finances and then waste our money or not steward our money well and just ask God for a miracle to bail you out but you're not going to do anything different God is saying listen he's given if anyone lacks wisdom let him ask for it ask for the wisdom listen Get around some people who have wisdom in the area, success in the area, that have had the breakthrough in the area that you need the breakthrough and get with them and learn from them and God will bless the effort. He wants to give us the shalom. We might be wanting, but the question is, are we willing to surrender, to do something different? But he's given you the power and authority to speak shalom to the chaos. So I want you to say with me, I will speak shalom to the chaos. I speak shalom to the chaos. Say, I will create out of the chaos, out of the chaos. and bring blessing. <laughs> Friends, this is also a year of supernatural wonders. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the acronym for this year Tav Shin Pei Beit, that's 5782 in Hebrew, is an acronym for the phrase 
Tehi Tehe Shnat Pilaot Bikol, a year of wonders in all things. It's what Paul saying tonight. He said the name, so the word for wonder begins with the pe, say Pele. One of the names of Messiah in Isaiah is Pele Oates, wonderful counselor. The first place the word Pele occurs in the Hebrew is at the Red Sea. God, which was the Torah portion last week, God parts the Red Sea and they sing the Shirat Tayam, the Song of the Sea, and they say, Mi kamocha be'elim Adonai, who is like you among the heavenly powers? Mi kamocha be'elim Adonai, Mi kamocha nedar ba'kodesh, O say fele, the one who does wonders. These are supernatural wonders. This numerical year means a year of wonder in all things. God wants to show you some supernatural stuff. And in fact, it connects in with what we're saying as a time to come out of Egypt because God did these wonders when he led the children of Israel out of Egypt but the amazing thing is this is what it says in the, the prophets, right? It says this. Micah 7.15, it says, Ki eretz Mitzrayim are enu niflaot, as in the days when you came out of Egypt, I will show them again my wonders. Listen, as it was in the days of Egypt with signs and wonders he redeems his people, so in this day and time there are going to be signs and wonders to turn the world's heart back to him. The end will be like the beginning. We can't settle for a form of godliness that lacks power. But I want to be real with you, there are going to be some negative wonders as well. There's a positive aspect to wonders. There's a negative aspect to what we're going to see. If we have the slide, uh, day of the Lord, Lord, Yom Adonai means as a numerical value of, uh, connects to the numerical value of 82. The day of the Lord is a day of destruction. It's a day of fear. It's a day of judgment, and I believe what we're seeing in the world with the COVID and the craziness, this isn't the end, but is it a sneak preview to what's coming? Right, for the first time we can see how the world financial system can be shut down. You can see how the world gives in out of fear uh, to get marked or vaccinated, or I'm not saying it's wrong, but what I'm saying is that you can see how government sees power and force people. You can't go here, you can't do this, you can't do that unless you obey. It's a sneak preview of what is coming. 82 is the number of Gaza in Hebrew. And so we're going to see some things in Gaza and in the Israeli-Arab conflict, but 82 is also the number of it is from the Lord. So God is in all of it. We don't need to fear. I'm hurrying up here because I'm running out of time. But it, friends, it's, so it's a year of supernatural wonders. We don't need to fear when we see this craziness going on in the world, but it's also a season of face-to-face -face encounters with him. So the phrase, again, may this be a year of face-to-face. Face-to-face in Hebrew can equal 82. The first letter of the word face is pe, panim, to face, panim, papanim. Pe is the first letter of face. Bait is the first letter of the word to face. And so 82, the acronym face to face, that is what the season is. And the Lord wants you to set your face to him. This is a season of intimacy. Can you say panim? Panim means face but it also means inner. What that tells us 
is God wants us to go past the surface level of our relationship and understanding of him. Most people are happy on the surface. I know you're not. But God says there's always more. He doesn't want you to have a surface understanding of his word. He wants you to dig down to the inner essence of his word. And God doesn't want you to just talk to him. He wants you to talk with him. In this season, we can't just talk to him, which is how we think of prayer. He wants us to talk with him. And that means because a relationship is speaking and listening. We're a lot better at speaking to God than often we are listening to him. And one thing the Lord, he gave me this encounter with him in which I, w- I, was, with him, I was with Yeshua and he told me to put my head on his shoulder and I'm not going to go into the whole encounter, but it was very powerful. And he said, I want you to come here often. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, this place is your secret place. So Yeshua says, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And in the immediate context of what he's saying, it's, it's like the groom goes away and prepares the place for the bride and then he comes back for her. So this is the first coming. The second coming is the groom comes back for the bride and marries her and they're, they consummate the marriage. Yeshua is the bridegroom. He's preparing a place for us with the Father. But it's not just future. There's a secret place There is the bridal chamber, which is the inner, the panim, the inner sanctum that he's inviting us into right now, into that secret place that he wants us to search for him. And sometimes we feel God is hidden. And one day there was a a rabbi's son and he was playing hide and seek with his friends And all of a sudden he noticed his son crying. He said, son, what's wrong? He said, I hid and my friends didn't come to find me. And the rabbi began to cry. And he said, God has hidden his face that we might seek him. It's like when I taught my son to swim in the pool. I would go further and further out so he could come further and further to me. My pulling away was so that he can go farther than he thought he could. When you feel God is hidden, it's often because he's saying, there's more, I want you to swim to the deep end and come to me. He's pushing you to go beyond. It's not because he's forsaken you. The letter bait is house, It's bara to create, it's bana to build, it's bracha, which means blessing. I'm not not, not going to not go into this, but friends, it's a time to build the house for God and you'll be blessed. It's like Noah building the ark before the flood. It's time to build for God. And so as we close, I want to invite my wife Miriam up. And there is a spirit of breakthrough. I believe that. I, I just, it was so clear to me, God hovering over the face of the deep. And I just want to say that 22 on the English, on the, in, is, is, you know, we're in the year 2022. 22 in Hebrew is a numerical phrase of the word bano, his hand. And it's also the number of 
the good in Hebrew, hatov. He wants you to see his hand in the midst of it, working all things out together for good. And you can have shalom because shalom is knowing God is in control and in all of the details. Amen. So listen, I'm gonna, we're going to pray in a minute. But I want to invite my lovely bride to, I want her to, the main song of the way Jews declare their surrender and dedication to the Lord is with the words of the Shema. Say Shema. Shema. Yisrael. Yisrael. Adonai. Adonai. Eloheinu. Adonai. Adonai. Echad. When we're saying God is one, what we're really saying is, God, I will worship and serve you and none other. And I'll lay my life down for you who are the one. It's a declaration of surrender and of sacrifice. And I want to ask Miriam to sing, lead us in singing those words before we pray. Shama Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shama Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. together hero israel hero israel the lord our god is the lord our god is one hero israel hero Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Shama Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. So Lord, so I just want to, I want to invite Troy up here. I just want to invite Troy, Pastor Troy, Lord, I just want to declare right now the shalom of God over you in the name of Sar Shalom. I declare over you wholeness in your physical body. If you're in need of a miracle right now, we are declaring shalom, wholeness over your body right now. We're declaring shalom to the cancer, shlemut to the cancer. We're saying shlemut to the heart attacks and heart issues. Shlemu to the diabetes, Shlemu to uh, the chronic back pain, Shalom, 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 Yerushalayim, peace to Jerusalem. We're praying the whole, if you need a miracle in your body, just raise your hand now and we are going to stand and believe with you and say, Tish lach refuah shlema, min hashemayim, refuah ta nefesh, refuah ta goof, that there should be a healing sent right now, a breakthrough healing in your body now in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. If you need wholeness, 
in your relationships. Lord, we're asking you wholeness and healing between husbands and wives, between parents and children, between friends, God. We ask between family members right now, Lord, we declare that your shalom, shalom. We're speaking shalom into the situations, into the relationships. I want you to picture any chaos in your life right now. So let's picture the Holy Spirit hovering over it like he hovered over the deep and say, Holy Spirit, come into the mess. Come into the chaos. Say, bring order out of chaos now in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. We declare that over you. God is setting free. There is a breaker, breakthrough anointing in this place. Whatever you need breakthrough now, just speak it, just declare it. God wants to begin to do it. Let him download to you now. We're saying downloads wisdom and revelation to know how to get different parts of your life in order to bring it out of the chaos now in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. And we're declaring over Troy right now. Lord, we thank you that this is a decade, and, and Pastor Leon, we thank you, God. This is a decade to come out of Egypt, and there is a spiritual, an emotional, a relational, but there is a physical. And God has raised you up to be a Moses. A, a Papa Moses. Where's your lovely bride? Is she here? And a Mama Moses. Papa and Mama Moses. And you're leading the children out of slavery. And instead of a microphone, instead of a staff of Moses, the rod of Moses, God has put a microphone in your hand that is a megaphone. A microphone that will become a megaphone to rally hundreds of thousands and ultimately millions of people to the cause of setting women and children free. So I declare over you right, over you both right now that Moses was given the wealth of Pharaoh, the wealth of the wicked, the wealth of the persecutor was given to the deliverer to do the work of God. And we're declaring the wealth of the wicked that is stored up for the righteous to be released over your lives that there should never be a lack, but always enough. And because you have been found faithful, God is going to give you the overflow. And he honors you. And there will be a multitude in heaven that call you mama and papa. And we declare that all those who sow into you will have a share in that blessing, in that day when we see him face to face. So Lord, I'm asking for a spirit of generosity to be released over all those who are watching. The wealth of Egypt went in part to build the tabernacle and Moses literally had to tell them to stop because they had more than enough. And I want to pray that there'd be such a response to the work of, that they are doing that they literally have to say, we have so much, we don't even know what we can do with it. So we speak that over them right now as they are building an ark to rescue, as they are building an ark, a refuge, as they are in this year of the house, they are building homes, God. They are walking in alignment with the prophetic promise in word of this season, and we just speak, speak that breakthrough blessing over them so that they could break others out of their personal Egypts. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, we bless them in your son's name. Amen.
And I just want to declare as I close the blessing of shalom over you. As we said, 782, may he give you shalom. If we could just, the music down for one second. Yivarech Adonai v'yishmorecho Ya'er Adonai panevelecha v'ikuneko Yisa Adonai Panevelecho Vayasem lecho Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord shine his face upon you. And may he give you shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Shalom in the storms. Courage and strength to face the waves that may come. In the name of Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen, the amen in him. Everybody stretch your hands towards my brother. Everybody stretch your hands towards him. Father God, I lift up my dear friend, and I thank you, King Jesus, for this word that he brought, for the anointing that he carries. Thank you, Lord God, sir, that, God, that you just made Rabbi Jason to be Rabbi Jason because, God, we needed him. Yeah, the body of Jesus needs him. Father God, bless his beautiful bride, bless his house. I pray, Father God, in the name of King Jesus, that Lord God Almighty, sir, that you would line him up with such extravagant things this year. God, that you would just extravagantly love on him, Lord God. I thank you, God, for his amazing encounter with you, Lord. And I pray, God, that he'd have so many more. I call him blessed. I call him holy. I declare the shalom of the Lord be upon him in Jesus' name. Friends, I just want to say, Boachem le Shalom. You're to come in in Shalom. Seitchem le Shalom. You were to go out in his Shalom. And right now, there is an anointing and authority. I see a mantle of Shalom coming on you. And everywhere you go, you need to understand you carry his shalom. You can shift atmospheres because you carry his shalom. Speak the word of shalom. At your work, you carry your shalom. In your family, you carry your shalom. In your community, you carry its shalom. Pastor Troy, when you go into these places, you, on these missions trips, when you go into these areas of trafficking, you carry the authority of his shalom and you will bring peace as a peacemaker in him, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.